The U.S. and China back at the negotiating table today. Can a trade deal be made by the March 1st deadline? We bring in Tori Whiting, trade economist at the Heritage Foundation. Tori, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm really curious. What constitutes a deal here? What, what sounds reasonable that both sides can agree on? Well, here's the thing. I think it first starts out that both sides need to be willing to make concessions. And that's why you see uh, these meetings this week happening between lower level staff at USTR and the, and the foreign ministry in China. They're trying to figure out what's the starting point for, the, starting point for these negotiations and how can they move forward. Um, I think that if the U.S. is willing to reduce its tariffs that it's imposed thus far and China is willing to make some reforms, especially in the area of intellectual property rights, we can be in a good spot. How do we guarantee, is there a mechanism that we can use to make sure that China follows through on, on any promises that it makes? Because it's made promises in the past, but it doesn't enforce them. How do we make sure they, they follow through? That's absolutely the main crux of the problem. And I think what we need to have is, is kind of a two-pronged effort by the administration. Not only do ne negotiations need to be going on continually, which they should have been happening for the last two and a half years or so, but the U.S. also needs to remain strong when it comes to enforcing CFIUS review, uh, when it comes to Treasury sanctioning individuals and companies that steal U.S. intellectual property. And we need to take more cases to the WTO to continue that pressure on China and work with our allies around the world, the EU, Japan, et cetera, to keep that pressure on without tariffs. The futures are up this morning. We had nice gains the past two days for the market. It seems like there's optimism building that something gets done by the March 1st deadline. Uh, we do have a, a statement from the spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry, and they say this, China is sincere about properly resolving trade frictions on the basis of mutual respect, equality, mutual benefit, and reciprocity, that is the first time that they use the reciprocity when talking about trade. Are you optimistic about that? Well, I think what you're seeing from the markets right now is this renewed sense of certainty. Over the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of uncertainty in the market, not just trade-related, but also related to other issues. So I think anything that we can do to make sure that the future is going to be secure and that people and individuals and companies know that the lines of trade are going to be free and open between the U.S. and China in the future, mm -hmm. that's going to help the market. It seems that the president listens more to the China hawk, the U.S. trade representative, Robert Lighthizer than he does Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. Lighthizer is more hard on China. Uh, we believe next week at the meeting, Lighthizer will be there. Uh, what does that signal to you? Does this trade deal get done next week, maybe? Well, the administration has named Ambassador Robert Lighthizer as the lead on this issue, so you do see folks under him doing the negotiations this week. I think this is completely natural. I mean, the Office of the United States Trade Representative mm -hmm. um, is where Bob Lighthizer is from, so it's to be expected that he should be the lead, and it's good that the administration has a point person on these issues, and it's not flipping between multiple people, so that can provide also certainty for the negotiations. All right. Tori Whiting, thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, obviously, investors uh, are watching what is unfolding.